Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week three matchup for the CISD Athletics Moorhead Stadium YouTube channel. I'm Jackson Cochran, and to my left is Sam Ulrich. It's great to be here. I'm excited to be here for our first district game of the season. Yes, and we are going to be your voices tonight for this week three matchup between the Caney Creek Panthers and the Conroe Tigers. And this coverage is being broadcast here tonight from the historic Buddy Moorhead Memorial Stadium here in Conroe, Texas. And Sam, a lot of regalness going on tonight since it is Conroe's homecoming. Tell me a little bit about the vibe that was going on on campus this week. Yeah, it was a, a spirit-filled week. You know, uh, during the week we have the dress-up days, and so uh, it, I'm, it, I'm a senior, so, you know, obviously I participated in the dress-up days. It kind of went all out for the decades day, uh, possibly dressed up as Ducky from Pretty in Pink. Oh, and so, I totally see that. So, uh, yeah, it, that was kind of nice epic. Pull. So, shout-out to my mom there. She really, she really helped with that one. Very cool, very cool. Well, with the spirit week and everything that has finally concluded, and we are seeing a pretty packed house in the stands right now, we want to talk a little bit about this matchup between the Caney Creek Panthers and the Conroe Tigers. And we're going to start off with just our three keys to victory tonight. And let's start off with these Conroe Tigers. Sam, we have been doing this for a couple weeks now. Yep. This is your third game watching the Tigers. Let's talk about these three keys to victory. So let's start with uh, the Tigers. What's one of your keys to victory for them tonight? So the first thing is you love getting those first two non-district wins. But, like, now the season starts. These are the games that matter to get you into the playoffs and potentially, you know, move a little along. So you got to take it one play at a time and focus up and try to get a win for these hometown crowds on your homecoming night. I like that. I like that. One of my keys is uh, being better disciplined by these Tigers. Now, I know that the very first game of the season, you're going to have a couple penalties. And week one, whenever they were playing, they did have quite a bit against Katie Paytel. Mm -hmm. But – from last week, they were able to bring the penalties down. It was a little bit faster-paced game for them. We didn't see a lot of stoppage. And that's where a lot of these, you don't want to give up those free yards. So as long as Conroe continues to play better discipline and not try to just give up those free yards and give good field position, I think that that'll be a great key to victory for them tonight. So what's your last one? So the last one is just keep the dominant defense of Conroe rolling. I've only given up uh, seven points through the first two weeks. And – you didn't commentate the Connor game last week, but you, you didn't see him give up any points uh, since the last time. So seven, get seven points given up on the year, and uh, they're looking to keep that dominant performance here tonight in their first district game against Caney Creek. Excellent. So now we've talked about Conroe. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the three keys of victory for this Caney Creek offense and defense, just pretty much the Panthers in general. Mm -hmm. I had the privilege of getting to commentate their game last week, and one of my big keys of victory for them is – continuing to win in the trenches because if you look at this Caney Creek offense they have rushed for 450 yards on the season and that's just two games that's a lot of yards mm -hmm. 250 in the first game a little over 200 in the second game so you have to give your hats off to this offensive line that they have and continue to be able to just make these holes especially with that three-headed monster that they have just that tandem you have Graves, Ramsher, and Palmer get those holes, be able to get down the field, and continue to find themselves in the end zone. What's number two for you? Yeah, uh, it's obviously uh, it's going to keep the ball and win the, win the turnover margin. This, this is a Caney Creek team that for the, their first, through, uh, first two games, they have not turned the ball over once, Good. and they have, they have gotten four turnovers, two forced fumbles, and then two interceptions. So that's just something like that's, that's how Caney Creek has played through these first two weeks, and if they want to win the game tonight, that's how they're going to have to perform here at Buddy Moorhead Stadium. And before we have to give into our sponsors and everything like that, I just want to give our last key victory, one last key to victory, and it's don't play scared. This Caney Creek team, they they were really successful successful last week on fourth down conversions, at least 70%, and they were continuing to just not have to. But that's another key to victory, and we're going to go ahead and have our hype video and our sponsors. So we're going to take a little quick breather, and we'll pick back up with a little bit more keys of the games. You've got a lot going on, so how do you find time to take care of you? 
At Houston Methodist, we work around your busy life. There's same-day visits when you're sick, online scheduling with specialists, access to all your records through my chart, and video visits 24-7 if you need urgent care. Bringing you Houston Methodist's expertise wherever, whenever you need it. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. For over 40 years, Wood Forest National Bank has proudly supported the youth and schools of this great community. Our bank has grown through the years, and Montgomery County is our home. With over 30 convenient branch locations right here in Montgomery County, we are your community bank. Next time you're in the area, stop by and say hi. But for now, sit back and enjoy the game. Shopping for a new or used vehicle, or just looking for a place for good, reliable service, go with the names you know. Gullo Ford, Gullo Mazda, and Gullo Toyota. The Gullo family has been serving the Conroe Woodlands area since 1970. So the next time you're shopping for a new or used vehicle, or just need service, do yourself a favor and go see Gullo Toyota, Gullo Mazda, and Gullo Ford. Or log on anytime at GulloAuto.com. Gullo, let's drive. This is Donnie Buckaloo with Buckaloo Chevrolet. After two and a half years, I'm proud to say we have new Chevrolets in stock today and are receiving new inventory daily. At Buckaloo Chevrolet, what you see is what you get. We don't charge market adjustments or added equipment you don't want. The price you see is the price you pay, so don't pay over MSRP. On I-45 in Conroe or shop BuckalooChevrolet.com. It's a better buy at Buckaloo. It's not enough to be the leader in robotic-assisted procedures if we're not by your side for every step of your recovery, guiding you back to what makes you, you. Because it's not enough to replace your need if we're not getting you to the moments that can't be replaced. Memorial Hermann, advancing health, personalizing care. Sam, we just had the hype video for the Tigers as they are running out on the field right now. They're donning their gold standard tonight. What do you think about those unis tonight? They look clean. Uh, homecoming night, rocking the old gold with the uh, black helmet with the gold decal. And then for the, the Candy Creek Panthers, rocking the white jerseys with the gold pants and red socks with the gold and red helmets. I do appreciate the color scheme that Candy Creek has. That red and gold is always timeless. It's just, especially the regal, the pageantry of what is homecoming. Mm -hmm. Both teams donning, wearing gold. Just seems, it fits. It seems right. Yep. It's perfect. And before we have to take another break, uh, before we get the kickoff entitlement, ROTC coming out into the field, and coin toss, we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple stats going on. And, Sam, I know you've been doing some numbers crunching over there. Talk to me about what's been going on with this Conroe Tiger offense. Yeah, so currently in rushing, the Conroe Tigers have the, the third and fourth leading rushers in the district with Jermico Green in third place in the district and then quarterback Christian Nunley in fourth place. And then you also have Nick Medina in that top 15. And so it's just really a – a tandem of rushing that you have and we, we've seen a lot of uh, split shotgun formations where you have 
Jermiko and Nick. And so it's just it, there's a lot of possibilities. Especially since they run the spread, run pass option. You're going to see – you're going to either give it to one of those guys because they've been utilizing this ground game very well. But also – the Tigers still also have just a number one wide receiver in Nigel Lede that I know that we were talking about it in week one. I wanted mm -hmm. to see some Nigel Lede, and we didn't get really a really chance to see him a lot until about halfway through. Correct. That's true. But and go ahead and finish that. We're about to just have yeah. to take a break because we're about to have the national anthem take place. But uh, go ahead and say what you were saying yeah, about Yeah, he had a, a touchdown last week, and there was a couple times where he burnt the corner and got – called uh, the defensive PI call. So he, he played really good last week and looking forward to see what he does tonight. So Very nice. We're going to mute ourselves whenever we're about to have the national anthem take place and then we will be able to fill in some more. Thank you to the Conroe High School Band as the ROTC is exiting the field. Referee is coming to midfield and we are about to have the kickoff entitlement, coin toss, and then we will have our first, well technically this is the second district game this week because College Park played last night against Grand Oaks, but this is the first game for these two in district between the Panthers and the Tigers. Now, Sam. Not only we were just talking about this Tiger offense and what they were doing on the ball, I want to talk a little bit about Caney Creek, especially just this is the first time in a couple of years that they've had been undefeated in especially just non-district. Mm -hmm. They were undefeated. They went in, and they had their largest margin of victory against Rayburn on opening week. And then especially just continuing to adapt a little bit of this spread style offense that they have in using these three-headed running backs and only needing to pass in dire straits. And I have to just compliment just this offense and being able to continue to find ways to persevere and win and shift the paradigm. I hope that they can utilize this ground game some tonight and really put up a challenge for these Tigers because both these teams need to actually have a huge Mm -hmm. huge test, especially once we get deeper into the season, especially like later in district, because Conroe was trying to have their third consecutive playoff berth, and it'd be nice for the Panthers to make their first trip to the playoffs. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, these two teams, first and second in the district in defense, and their first two uh, non-district games, so could see a uh, Another potential low-scoring game, you know, the grind it out, get as many yards as you can. And we'll see Caney Creek, and we'll start with the ball. Heading to the 
north end zone towards the school. And this will be the first time Connor does not get the ball to start off the game. And also, it's pretty windy out there tonight. As you were seeing during the national anthem, those flags were waving. So the, the wind is pretty much going towards the south end zone. And the Tigers are ready to kick it off tonight, which means they will get the ball in the second half. Arjeet seeing back to kick for the Tigers. Kid has got a leg. Starting off at the two for Candy Creek. Getting tackled. I'm saying that they're gonna spot him at the 23, maybe the 24. It will be at the 23. So we're officially underway, Sam. It's football time. It is. District play is underway. We're rhyming today. This Connor defense expected to come out in some sort of four down lineman set, trying to really stack the box, try to stop this Candy Creek run. It's pretty much like a 4 3 4 style defense that they've been playing. And as you can see, we already see Aguilar in the gun. And I believe that's Palmer with the handoff as they just stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Actually, that's probably Darrell Ellis, actually. That was number six, Darrell Ellis. You can also see him in the mix as well. Great depth at the running back position for both of these teams tonight. We're going to see a lot of interchanging between the running backs. Candy Creek lining up with trips far side. Aguilar, plenty of time out of his receiver's hands. And that was Timothy Palmer. Had a nice slant right in the middle of the field, which will be third and nine here for the Panthers. You can see some of those Tiger defensive players, number four in general. Tate Trantham. Tate Trantham, thank you. Just signaling up, holding the... Yeah. It's third down. One of the captains on that defensive side. You see that they're stacking the line. Timeout. Candy Creek. Candy Creek has called a timeout. They will have two remaining with just, we're only just one minute into mm -hmm. this matchup. Trying to get a little bit of personnel changes, maybe try to find a different scheme. They saw that, I'm sure the coaches were looking and seeing what the Tigers were trying to put. A lot of pressure on the line. Tigers most likely know that we need to attack this ground game and make them throw. So we want to see if the Panthers have any jet sweeps that they could possibly come out with, maybe a little bit of play action because they've already thrown. They've attempted to pass tonight. Aguilar in the gun. The senior drops back. There is a flag on the play. I'm going to say that there was hands to the face by the Tigers. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Looked like there was a bit of a face mask there. When somebody's helmet falls off on a play, usually a... Uh Usually some sort of a penalty will occur. Maybe even just a late hit as Aguilar was sliding there as well. Just going to wait for the referees. Talking to the head coaches. So that is a first down. for the Panthers and just one of those key factors I was talking about earlier yep. for the Tigers. Can't give them free yards. Yeah, you can't. That was just uh, 
something that you can control. And when I talked to Coach Hardman yesterday, that was one of his big things is we got to be able to do the things that we can control and within ourselves. And the Tigers brought enough pressure. It just unfortunately, as you see that the Tigers finally just get in the backfield and tackled Ellis. It's just, you were able to collapse the pocket on Aguilar previously. You had a hand on him. Unfortunately, it was hands to the face and gave them that first down. But it is going to be second and 11, close to midfield, still in Panther territory. Battle of the Cats, Battle of the Moorhead Stadium. Mm -hmm. Candy Creek technically away, but this is their home stadium. Ellis with another handoff. Trying to find a seam, just gets maybe two. So it'll be a third and nine. So we see early third and longs here by the Panthers. Able to convert on the last one with that, that run with that face mask penalty. And right here, if it is going to be a fourth down, depending on if it's going to be a fourth and long. They have been successful, like I was saying, with going forward on fourth down. As Ellis goes in motion, Aguilar drops back. Pump fakes. There's another flag. I'm not sure if this is going to be a holding or not. Third down. So that is holding, so it'll be a third and long. And I think that the Tigers decided to give him a third and long instead of decline it, just because. Oh. To the play, fourth down. Spoke too soon. Yeah. Took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, it's going to be a fourth and long. And with the spot of the ball, if they were a little bit closer, maybe even past the 50, they would have gone for it. Mm -hmm. But. Panthers are making the smart play here, having faith in their punt team. It's a booming kick out of bounds. I think it's going to be spotted at the 25. And that was... Moises Vega, a lineman, who's actually their punt, who's their punter. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, the kid has a leg. So we're going to get to see what this Tiger offense is going to come out after enforcing a punt from the Panthers. So this is the Tigers' first drive this evening. Just nine minutes, six seconds remaining here in the first quarter for a first and ten. Nunley. In the gun. And that is going to be an incomplete pass. Just looking for his guy in the flat. It's Dramico there. So that was Dramico, green number seven. I was seeing Tyler Weiss in motion. Got a little antsy there when he saw the ball coming to him. He looked up a little before, didn't focus, didn't catch the pass. And so we're going to see second and ten here. So at the top of our screen, the far side, I do see Nigel Lede, and he's got plenty of room. They're not really pressing him that much. They're giving him a good cushion. So it's another handoff to Dramico and is tackled in the backfield. That is the that is a five yard, four or five yard loss right there. Yeah, and there were about four or five white white jerseys there. Uh, tackling Dramico. That that Caney Creek uh, D line just absolutely get in that backfield, yeah. So it's – no, it's – it was just – they stopped forward progress at the line. So it's actually going to be a third and ten. So Tigers are doing some changes. Four wide receiver set. Lagway. To Lede. Incomplete. So Nunley throws an incomplete pass. To Lede, it was just a little short. 
So this is going to be a three and out from the Tigers. So Arjeet Singh back to punt. There's a generous bounce, and Ellis was there making him think he was going to try to go with it. And this is going to be good field position for the Panthers for their second drive tonight. What did you see from that Panthers defense that you liked, Sam? Uh, I saw just some uh, attacking right out of the gates uh, on that second down, able to get in the backfield and stop you know, third highest rusher in the district and bring him down. Uh, for that Connor offense, I saw a little bit of anxiousness early on in this game, and so we'll see how that settles out. So Aguilar in the gun. Ellis, they throw to the flats, get him in the open space as he finally gets a first down and then some. Gets into Tiger territory. It's Kenny Creek offense trying to go fast here. They're getting a little up-tempo. So Graves is now in, and he is just one of these trucking backs that mm -hmm. you're going to see. You just see him just power himself. He's just a power back getting through there. Almost, 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 almost a first down. Yeah, I think he almost could have gone all the way. I think he tripped a little bit there and stumbled, but they might. We have ourselves another timeout. They're gonna mark him just short. It'll be it'll be a second and one. But that's something that this Caney Creek offense does. They're utilizing their weapons. It's usually the backs, and you'll see some mixture of Timothy Palmer in there. But right now, we know that we've seen some action from Ellis, and we've seen some action from Graham's. Graves, we haven't seen anything from Ramshire yet. So some momentum in the favor of these Panthers as they're just seven yards away from the red zone. Yeah, back-to-back -back, like chunk plays to start off this, this drive, which they got pretty good field position to start off. So another handoff to Graves. Just cutting in between, pounding through the gut. Running downfield hard. Continuing to go up tempo with another handoff. Panthers not trying to allow Connor to make any substitutions from the defense. You can see that they're showing that blitz, trying to crowd the line, gap press, and we're able to stop this ground and pound just to another two yard gain. So it'll be third and three, third and four. Big momentum play here for both teams. Aguilar. Gives it to Graves, jumps as he's trying to stretch to the outside, but is brought in the backfield. So it will be fourth and five. Ball at the 15. And it looks like they might actually attempt a field goal here. I believe so. This will be a 32-yarder. Got the back wind behind him, so win in their favor. Little bit of uh, but they split the uprights. Yeah, they did. It was a bit of a bobbled snap, but able to keep his composure. So the Panthers strike first, getting three on the board. 
and the Tigers have only allowed seven points so far this season, and now mm -hmm. Panthers striking first. Yeah, they did. Uh, just a great drive when they got started at their own 39, was able to pick up a big play on that the, the first drive, just a little dump off into the flats, able to get some run after the catch, and then after that just straight, straight ground and pound, just go to that run game that's basically their bread and butter of all season and just – once you got in that field goal range, you felt a little bit more comfortable because putting points up on the board early, especially in a game where it's two defenses who have been really good all year, is a big factor in the game tonight. Very much so, and I'm still in awe just of that little dump pass into the flats that he, over to Ellis. Just The kid is fast. You get him into open space, and he just made a guy miss and was able to get to the close to the second level. Yep. Luckily, the DBs were playing a little bit far back, but with what this Connor defense has been doing, they've been playing a lot tighter because yeah. they've been trying to defend the run more. They have. And so I think it caught them a little off guard when they when they threw it on their, their first play of the drive. You're really expecting run there. And so give props to the, uh, the Caney Creek offense there and their, I guess, offensive play caller to Benitez kicking it off, and it – goes out of bounds, so that will be a penalty. We'll see where they're going to spot the ball from the penalty. Kick out of bounds against the kicking team. The ball will be placed five yards run where the ball went out of bounds. First down. So the Tigers are going to have their second drive after the penalty. The ball is going to be placed at the 35. Just six minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Panthers leading 3-0. Seeing some, as of right now, five wide action. So they're going to be going empty? Probably not. We might see some motion across the line. Potentially a jet Potentially. sweep, but they're, they're going empty. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, uh, there we go. So Nunley overthrowing Green. It was a nice little play concept there, but Candy Creek absolutely read it. It was a little, looked like a bubble screen out to Bryson Champagne, but then Christian Nilly does a, a full 180 and tries to dump it off to Jermico Green. Just But if you looked in the backfield, you could see that Hector Rodriguez, number 31 for the Panthers, he was right there. Mm -hmm. That right. defensive lineman had his one read, and it was just get in the backfield yep. and attack whoever has the ball. So Green is still in the backfield. Tigers lining up. Twins, far side. Champagne in motion. But there is an another whistle. Don't see any flags. It might be a timeout. I see one right about the ah, 40. There's the good eye. Good eye. The middle game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. So delay a game for the Tigers. Another penalty for this home team. Mm -hmm. This is King Creek ball. There is no foul for the of game. Timeout, Conroe. Okay. <laughs> so they had the wrong balls on the field. Common mistake. So we have a little bit of a stoppage going on right now. Trying to keep an eye on what else is going on within. Also want to see what's going on in the district because we know that the Woodlands is playing Oak Ridge tonight just yeah, that's north of us. Or just south of game. us, actually. South of us. That'll be a really good game. Oak Ridge is spectacular. D-line. 
those two Georgia commits. Who are a couple of the commits that, that we know of so far with the Tigers? So for the Tigers, uh, we have mostly on the defense, we have Devondre McGee, number 17, cornerback. He's heading to TCU next year. Very nice. Tigers lining up. Nunley drops back. Looking and was looking for Bryson Champagne just right in between his hands. So it'll be an incomplete for a third and 17. So Nunley, he's going to keep it. Stretching the field, tackle just before he makes it back to the 35. Watching this replay, the pocket pretty much collapses on him. Finds some opening. But that was Isaiah Sanchez, the defensive back for Caney Creek, just coming and putting a stop to that. But actually, it looks like it's second down. We're having some issues with the downage. So I'm keeping it. So I do see, yes, it is fourth down. I want to make sure. Mm -hmm. So Kano is punting it. Ellis signaling. Get away. Ball rolls out. Favors Caney Creek. So the Panthers continuing this momentum in their favor with great field position yet again. Back-to-back -back three and outs for this Caney Creek defense. Exactly what you were looking for out of this Caney Creek defense. Just. You're right. That that D-line right there yeah. for the Panthers, they are putting pressure on this, on these Tigers. And mm -hmm. while you were just looking at Hector Rodriguez on that previous series, making his way, causing a disturbance, Tigers have themselves a, uh, well, Aguilar is going to keep it. Breaks a tackle. It's going to take at least three, maybe four, a whole pack of Tigers. Oh, my. I'm hearing a little Jack Harlow from the band downstairs. I hear a little as well. Actually, isn't it a little Nas X and Jack Harlow? Yeah. Okay. No cap. Trying the, the new lingo. I'm trying. I, I don't get it. That's a big truck uh. from the Panthers. So we're finally getting to see Brandon Ramsher in, in the backfield. What we've seen so far from the three-headed monster, it's been Ellis, then Graves, and now Ramsher. Going to see if they're going to continue this timeshare. So it looks like it's a false start from the Panthers. False start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Repeat. First now. And if you are here with us live tonight, watching the stream, if you're not actually here in the stadium, we'd like to thank you for joining us and Anytime that we're going live, I just want to remind you that if you go to the YouTube page, you click that subscribe button, and you click that bell, it's going to remind you anytime that we're going to be going live for you, so you do not have to set any reminders. As the Panthers hand it back off to Ramsher, he gets back to the 39 to replace the loss yardage. So it's going to be a second and ten. But we have a lot of great content. Also, it's not just mm -hmm. the YouTube stream. We also have our Instagram. We have our formerly known as Twitter X. You just follow us at Conroe ISD Sports. All one word, Conroe ISD Sports. And you can just continue to follow us there. And we have a lot of teams 
we have a lot of our people putting up content and there was a flag on that play from the pass in the flats. I think that was another hold. Usually when it's in the in the, the backfield like that, typically is, but we'll see. Holding. Offense number 70. That penalty is to slide. We go to play. Four man. So declining the penalty, referee says fourth down. I thought it was third down. It's been some miscommunication this evening. So it is still third down. So it's third and long. Ramsher in the backfield to the right side of Aguilar. Stuffs him right at the line of scrimmage. It is going to be a fourth down here. This Tiger defense able to finally get a three and out. Mm -hmm. And Vega back to punt for the Panthers. Trying to get eyes on who's back to return for the Tigers. I believe it's Jalen Mayon. There is a, they're calling the play dead. I'm looking for some laundry on the field. Don't see Don't anything see any. yellow. Ref's talking it over. While these referees are going to converse, we're going to try to look for a specific update on what is going on just south of us over at the bank. Because we do know that College Park did win over Grand Oaks last night. Still not sure what's going on. I think that with some stoppage here, looks like we lost some lights at the north side of the field. Got a little dark over there. But current update right now over at Wood Forest, it's 14-6 Highlanders. And they are still in the first quarter as well. A lot more points over there than here. That's a theme I've noticed over these first three weeks. There's a lot of points scored over at the bank. I don't know. There were quite a bit of points scored week one here at Moorhead Stadium. That is Stadium. true. I mean, the Tigers did, what, run up 40 That is plus? true. They put on Everything that has transpired on the field it looks like the Tigers are going to start with the possession at the 45. Not 100% sure what was going on from the kick. But Green goes in motion. Nunley's keeping it. Trying to stretch it. Makes himself. He gets tackled by number 14, Isaiah Sanchez. Just a shoestring tackle. But I'm just going to say this. Keep an eye out for number five, Traverius Jackson, the linebacker, is a big showstopper for this Panther defense. Nunley pitches it to Medina as he gets a first down as they are in Panther territory for the first time this evening. First, first down of the game. For the Tigers. Yep. And that's the first time we saw Nick Medina on the field, I believe. Big run. Big run.
Nunley looking for the seams. Gets a man. Big pass play there by the Tigers. That was Jalen Mellon on the reception. Gets it in the goal line. That looked to be about a 20-yard reception. Untouched. I saw it. He put it on the burners, just mm -hmm. going straight streaking to the end zone. We have a penalty by the Tigers. Possibly a false start. Flag was in the backfield. Yeah, that previous pass play looked like Candy Creek was sitting in a zone and Nunley was able to find a, a seam where Jalen was open and able to pick up a big chunk of yards there. So the pitch to Green, it looked like he was also going to try. And he's a little razzle-dazzle, tiptoe his way. Makes a man miss into the end zone. What an interesting play. It looked like it broke up right there in the backfield because Medina looked like he was expecting it. And we're going to get that replay after the PAT. And we're going to just call what we see with that. But that was a following the penalty. Jermico Green getting a touchdown for the Tigers. His second of the year. The extra point attempt is good with just 40 seconds remaining, but here's the replay. So it looked like a little bit of a wildcat. So it, you see that Medina and then Green coming back with it and then just a stutter step and another quick little stall and then picking it back up and finding his way into the end zone. It, it seemed like Medina was expecting the ball there. It was it was an interesting formation with, with Nunley under center and then three three – people in the backfield that's there. true it wasn't Wildcat. yeah it was it was it was nothing in the center and then there was a lot of just confusion there if, if I was on that Caney Creek defense I would have been confused as well you don't see that many offenses especially in the high school level that have a quarterback go under center a lot that is true but the Tigers finally get their first points of the game Leading 7-3. With just 40 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. As Singh gets the ball on the tee. Just for those of you who are still watching with us, just a reminder that it'll be a little bit of an extended halftime show since it is homecoming here for the Tigers and you'll see the bands and the drill teams after the game will still have that coverage for you. So as Singh kicks it off, since the player went down, are they gonna signal this down at the one since he fell to his knees? There's something you don't see very often off on the kickoff is- I don't think that he was trying to no, he do wasn't. a touchback. So it's going to be the two. first and 10 at the two. 98 yards to get down the field for the Panthers. Some dangerous territory. Panthers should probably have Graves come out since he's the power back. I agree. He's picked up a bunch of chunk yardage plays and just been bulldozering some guys over. Graves is in the backfield. Hands it off. Just gets two, so it'll be second and eight. With the remaining just under 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. Probably get one more play before we switch sides. 
be a long walk down to the other side. Unless Canyon Creek can pick up some big yardage here. Well, they're going to let time they might, yeah. They're going to let it wind down. The play clock wasn't going. So a nice little breather for both teams. So after one in the books, Tigers leading 7-3 over Caney Creek. Sam, what have you seen that you've liked so far? And being a critique, so what is mm – -hmm. and also let me know one thing that you probably didn't like from both teams. So one thing I liked from, from Caney Creek is they, they're playing – conservative football and that's that's how they play they don't turn the ball over you're right and that was one of their keys they haven't turned the ball over all year that's what if you want to stay in this game and win the game you're going to just you know keep the ball you don't want to any big momentum shifts and what i like seeing from conroe is on that the the drive where they, they scored the touchdown they really had a lot of confusing motions confusing formations to really throw off that game it was throwing defense. me off up yeah there. me too and so Something I would like to see some from Caney Creek possibly is bust out a little play action. Like this here would be a great time to bust out a play action. Really, It would really catch the Conroe defense off guard, I feel like. They've ran the ball, uh, I believe, the majority of the time. They've, they've ran the ball the majority of the time. So a play action here would, it would catch them off guard. The only issue that I've seen for both teams is just the penalties. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to get the discipline back down. And I understand it's just you're giving up those free yards. We don't. You don't need to do that. And as Aguilar is going to get the ball and do a keeper, he gets almost the first down. Going to wait for the spot. He does get the first down. Aguilar gets nine on that run. But we'll see what happens in this second quarter before we get that halftime and as the Panthers still have Graves in the backfield Tigers line up four down linemen we have another penalty I believe this is going to be a false start from the Panthers false start offense number 50 five yard penalty repeat now. Yeah, I saw, I believe it was it was Matthew Westmoreland there. He he kind of like, you know, shifted over on the line. I think that caused a, a little, little bit, bit of, of movement. Flinch. Yeah, a little bit of movement from the uh, O-line there. Sitting in that position for a while, you know, my body might shake a little bit. Oh, definitely. Me too. Panthers lining up. Aguilar still in the gun. Play action, bubble screen, but played very nice. That was Isaiah Pruitt on the coverage, just tackling Timothy Palmer in the backfield. Yeah, that's Isaiah Pruitt, the senior. Last year was his first year on defense. His first two years as a football player, he played on the, the offensive side. And I talked to Coach Hardman yesterday. That was his big things was get some of those skill position players to play on the defense, and that's what's really bolstered their, their defense this year. I need you to give me some uh, FaceTime with Coach. I need. I have a couple questions. <laughs> so it'll be a second and long, pretty close to an in, to the end zone. Kenny Creek lining up with trips, far side. Graves goes in motion, and it's going to be an incomplete pass in the flats, in the flat. So it'll be a third and long. Biggest thing for Kenny Creek right here is just to push the ball forward some if they're going to have to punt. Mm -hmm. Not that many not that many playbooks have a third and, let's say, 20 play for a first down. Especially when you're backed up at your own five-yard line. You don't, you don't have all day to stand back there because you got that thinking back in your head that I can't take a safety here. Mm -hmm. So hand off to Graves. Still churning, and it's taking four Tigers to finally bring him down. And that is going to be a fourth and 12. So this is going to be the third time we're going to get to see this punt personnel come out. 
and Jalen Mayen is back to return. He's lined up, which will be the Panthers, 45. Yeah, dangerous return man. First in the district and punt return yards. And it looked like the, the ball was blocked. The Tigers were bringing everyone, but there is a flag at the end. We're waiting for the call in the field. And if the Tigers are going to take over at the five. After the play, against Congo, number 30. 15 yard penalty, first down. So where you had five yards to get into the end zone, they are going to have to go start this drive at the 20. Still in the red zone. Big block there by the Tigers. Still excellent field position. Deep into the Panther territory. And Nick Medina's in the backfield right next to Nunley. So 9.30 remaining here in the half. It's a play action. Nunley sw dumps it off to Tyler Weiss. And he is back at the line of scrimmage, so it'll be a second no, they give him one yard on the reception. So it'll be second and nine. As the Tigers are lining up with four wide receivers. And this is going to be a design play that Nunley's keeping it, and he gets the first down. See where they spot this ball. They're going to give it to him. I doubt that they're going to measure. They're going to give him the first down. So it's going to be a first and goal. Ten yards to pay dirt. Medina in the sidecar. Champagne in motion. Hand off to Medina, still gets tackled just short of the goal line. Nice big hole right there in between the guard and the center. And the Tigers are just two yards away from a touchdown. Second and goal, hand off back. Nope, Nunley's keeping it and tackled as he crosses the plane. Tiger touchdown, 14 points unanswered now from the Tigers. Well, 13 pending yeah, the extra pending point. the extra point. That's a great way to capitalize off that blocked punt for the Tigers, and that gives Christian Nunley his second rushing touchdown on the year. Great play call by the Tigers there. Just, I don't know if it was a de design quarterback keeper or maybe a read option, but Nunley able to, to power through into the end zone there, pick up those two yards, and pick up the Six points. We have ourselves an official timeout. So it'll be a second before we get the actual special teams to come for the PAT. But just another reminder, because we, since this is homecoming weekend for the Tigers, tomorrow is the actual annual Conroe Tiger alumni, the alumni breakfast, and... It's going to be taking. It's going to be starting off at the C, the CHS Olden Gymnas Old Gymnasium. Forgive me, I'm stepping on my words for a second. It's going to be at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, and all of this is the proceeds are going to help fund scholarships for mm -hmm. a lot of seniors, and they're also going to be paying a tribute to uh, Buddy Moorhead, who passed away in 1983, who was head coach for the Tigers in whenever he was still here coaching with us. And the extra point attempt is good for the Tigers. So 14 points unanswered. But again, if you are a Conroe Tiger alum who is listening with us tonight, just letting you know that 
parking up front because there has been a lot of construction that's been going on around here at the stadium. So it's going to be the Alumni Association Annual Homecoming Breakfast, Saturday, September 9th, 9 a.m. at the pit, $10. All proceeds will fund the future scholarships. And it's also, like I said, they're, whole, they're honoring Buddy Moorhead, who passed away in 1983, who was the stadium that we are playing this football game here tonight. They named after. And the Moorhead family is also going to be there tomorrow morning. So just if you a graduate of Conroe High, old and young, please come and support your Tigers. And the Tigers are lining up to kick it off to the Panthers. So Daryl Ellis and Timothy Palmer are lined up at their own 10 for the return. Singh does have the leg. And they're going to let this go into the end zone. And I think the wind also had a little bit of the favor, but that yeah. was a mighty, mighty kick. It's a little line drive. Kind of looked like a double into the gap if you're a baseball fan. <laughs> Have you checked in on those Astros tonight? Last time we were Not looking into it. It was, it was a little. Uh, it was a, it was 5-1 last time we checked. I'm, I'm too scared to look into it right now. It is now 6-1. So mm -hmm. the Padres are leading the Astros right now. If you are inclined to know, it is the bottom of the fifth. Hopefully these Astros can persevere and turn it around, but let's concentrate on what's going on in front of us right now, which is this Caney Creek offense looking to have excellent field position. Well, good field position compared to the last drive. Correct. And a nice dump off to Ellis. He gets two on the reception. Haven't seen a lot of vertical throws mm -hmm. from the Panthers. They're, they're favoring just these swing passes, some screens. They haven't really tried to go vertical since the first quarter. And that was a slant that they threw to Palmer earlier. So play action, Aguilar is actually gets a keeper option as he's tackled in the backfield. So you see here on this replay, Tigers are just pressing these gaps and getting mm -hmm. to the backfield. And number 35, that was Cooper Simmons, the senior on the tackle, and then waiting for the assist from his teammates. So it's third and 10. Close to six and a half remaining here in the half. Aguilar's rolling right, throwing down, and does connect with Ellis. Do they say that he had the reception? Does he have possession? No, he did not. Just out of bounds, so it'll be a fourth and ten as this punt team comes back out. Have to give it up to this Conroe defense. It's forcing another three and out. Yeah. Shaking a little bit of that rust off. Yeah, yeah. after coming off the, the first drive where they got the, the field goal, just responding with some enthusiasm from the defense. Panthers able to get the punt off. And Mayon has a nice return. So it was started at the 41. Almost, I would say that it was about 19 yards. Just waiting for the end of the spot. That was a 19 yard return. He actually had to backtrack some because he didn't think it was going to go that far. Yeah, I know. That's an impressive way to backtrack and then. I have to give it up to Moises Vega. 
The yeah. lineman has a leg. I know. You don't see that many linemen that are going to be your punt, who are actually going to be your punter. So the Tigers look like they're going to go empty. Nunley escapes pressure, evades another tackle as he gets four on this keeper. Yeah, there was some early pressure there from the Candy Creek D-line, but not only just able to evade that pressure and pick up some, some yards to make it second and manageable here. Well, that was number 91, Elijah E. As Green gets the handoff, as he sweeps right and cuts back, gets extra yardage for a first down. Green gets 16 on that rush. Tigers back in the red zone. Play clock is at 10. Tigers might have to be calling themselves yeah, another timeout. If they can get it off, able to get it off, it's going to be an option in the pitch. And Champagne sweeps. Are they going to give him the first down? That was a 12-yard pitch over to Champaign as it's going to be a first and goal at the 8 for the Tigers. And what I've noticed about this, this Tiger offense is once they get in the red zone, they're very heavy in the, the, the split back shotgun. And we usually see, we don't see a lot of Medina once we get in the red zone with Jermico back there. We see a lot of Bryson Champaign. And usually what, what Champagne does is he'll motion out of the backfield, create some confusion, and you sometimes give a lead block. That's what happened last week. So another handoff to Green as he breaks a tackle, as he's forcing his way through, crosses the goal line. They are going to signal it. Touchdown, Tigers. 20 unanswered with 4.08 remaining here in the half, pending the extra point. There's going to be another official timeout. Sam, what did you like from that run? Just the amount of yards he got after contact. That was a power run there. He's trying to, to imitate Graves from Candy Creek over there, just, just powering through, playing some, some bully football, and able to get in that end zone. I know he wanted that touchdown really bad there. Gets his third on the year, second of the night, second of the first half. And you don't see a true Smash Mouth style football anymore, no. especially in this high school level but just utilizing a lot of these counters and these draws and just starting off, especially in the spread, you have a little bit more momentum that you can pick up your acceleration and just having that force and getting into making just that initial contact and getting from there. Hats off to, hats off to Green just punching it in and just continuing to fight for those yards and getting that score. As the special teams, they're coming onto the field for the point after and seeing back to kick. He's been perfect this season on PATs. Hopefully that does not jinx him when you mention that. Oh, it's the announcer's jinx. I know. It happens sometimes. Don't want it to happen, oh. but he has been perfect this year. They haven't even really had to kick a field goal. That's a sigh of relief. So the Tigers tack onto their lead to the Panthers, 21-3, with just 4.08 remaining here in the half. As you see, the green touchdown, fighting for those extra yards, crossing the plane. Following this half, like I said, it is homecoming, and we're going to have an extended, especially for the homecoming court, 
and usually we have a lot of the bands and the drill team they play after the game and we will still continue to be live for you so you can watch your family members any one who you know that you're supporting on both sides of the schools just want to make sure that you still tune in and we will still be bringing you we will not talk over any of that oh absolutely not i'll probably watch it myself it's it's great they put a lot of time into it i was in the the cafeteria earlier this week i had a a DECA meeting and the the band they they practiced in the cafeteria they they took up the the tables moved them out of the way okay hold on uh, what kind of meeting DECA it's a it's an organization DECA doesn't actually stand for anything it's just it's like a business organization you learn uh some great business skills such as being able to to talk uh one of the well you're talking right now it's being able to like you know work in situations there's different things so like I'm I'm a part of the the Starting next week's the stock market game. So you're you're given a fake situation. You get a hundred thousand dollars, and you have to invest in, in the stocks according to real life over a three month period of time. And you got to see how good you do. Amazon and Apple. Yep. The I don't know how many shares you could buy with that. that I'm sure. Well, You'll, you might be able to get. Well, can you get a Bitcoin with that? Are they going to let you try Bitcoin? It's a good question. You should ask that in school. On the I day. know. I should. The Panthers' offense are lining back up. And I see Palmer in the backfield. I mean, I'm sorry, Ramsher. As they hand it off, and he is tackled back at the line of scrimmage. My apologies for stepping over you. No, you're fine. I was just saying that I, I actually own some Dogecoin. And that price has tanked from when I acquired it. So I'm waiting I think eventually it might it might skyrocket. You never know. For all your funding needs, you can just go see Sam Ulrich. As Ramsher gets another handoff. You're not a fiduciary, are you? Well, to be honest, I have no idea what that <laughs> means. So ask your people. Ask ask your teacher on Monday what a okay. what a fiduciary is. I'll write that down right now. <laughs> I don't even know what it begins with. I'm going to guess F. Yes. Okay. There we go. So with 320 remaining here in the half, it's another timeout. And I think that next week might be the last week that we are going to have one of these late start games just because of how bad this summer has been with the heat index because we still are in the triple digits correct we had some some golf practice this, this week where we had to cut short due to the the heat index uh one day the heat index was at 115 what have what are a lot of the rules especially with uil now that they allow you or do and don't allow with how much time you spend outside because of how bad this heat's been yeah so Yesterday I talked with, with, with Coach Hardman about this, about how they're conditioning with the practices, and he said that it's affected them a lot. And they basically have had practice sometimes at 6 in the morning all the way up to sometimes at 7 at night. Aguilar throwing downfield just over his receiver's head. That'll be another incomplete. That is fourth down as the punt team makes their way back to the field for Caney Creek. So Coach Hartman just explaining that a lot of these, especially with the heat index, has affected a lot of preparation for his team. Yeah, and so, like, especially when it's that hot, there's a certain temperature. You can only practice for about two hours, I believe, is the, is the limit for that certain number of uh, when it's that hot outside. Vega punting. Nice hang time. As the Tigers are signaling for the fair catch. As he runs into his man, I think that Mayen ran into Harris on the return. Luckily, was able to put some hands on the punt. Because I remember back whenever I was here playing football for Conroe, we still had some drills that we would do inside, but especially with you need an open space. Mm -hmm. Being able to, if you were trying to utilize a, the, the pass play. Yeah, it's, it's true. 
because you can't just try to throw in small quarters whenever the ceiling is very low in the locker room. That sounds kind of interesting. Did y'all practice in the locker room? Actually, it was kind of one of those side. I don't. I haven't been down in the locker room area, so I don't know what adjustments have been made in the last twenty years. Nunley drops back, looking downfield, just overthrowing man. Sorry for that. <laughs> it hurts saying that out loud. How many years it's been since I've gone to school here? Making me feel old in this booth. But we did a lot of off-season drills because where, my, where our freshman lockers were, we had turf inside there and those a wide open space. Now, we would usually do like goal line sets and a couple just running because there was still plenty of room in there. But you rarely were trying to do any type of pass plays. But just kind of like Oklahoma drills, stuff like that. Sounds quite interesting. I can't really picture uh, practice going on in the locker room. I don't know what it looks like down in there in the facilities, yeah. but th that was at least 20 years ago. <laughs> Nunley drops back. Pocket collapses. He's just trying to escape it, but he is sacked. That was 91. Elijah Ije. Yeah, with the, the second half. And they only brought three men. Yeah. They were able to just attack with the defensive defensive ends. Yeah, Nunley just, you know, taking the sack. You got the three-possession lead. You have to run him down. You really don't want to, you know, commit a turnover there. So he just he takes the sack, doesn't want to make an ill-advised throw to the defense that could possibly, you know, change the momentum. So this is going to be a second and 33. This man goes in motion as he hands it off. Gets it into the open field. Eleven yards on that sweep. And we see a lot of Jalen Mayen more involved into this offense. The the punt returner. A lot more involved in this offense tonight. I'm still keeping an eye on number thirteen. My guy, Nigel Lede. He's in the near side. As he's getting a slant, running his route, I can keep an eye on it. And interception thrown. Who did I talk about earlier? Number five, Javarius Jackson. I believe it was also intended for Nigel Lede there. It was. And Jackson was right there waiting for it. Yeah, tipped by uh, number 12 of Caney, Caney Creek there. So that was Colton Correa. And Jackson just playing there in the coverage, playing his own, comes up with it and gives the Panthers really, really excellent field position just right there in the red zone. Yeah, with Candy Creek sitting in that zone, it was there was a very tight window if Nunley wanted to make that pass to Lede, so it made it really hard. Well, he even stepped up in the pocket yeah. there, so you thought that he had all the momentum because you're moving up. You're not really – well, hold on. They're moving back some. So I guess they're going to say he was down at contact whenever he caught the ball. That's uh, that's big. It's close to a 30-yard swing right there. Mm -hmm. You can hear the Panthers. They got a big crowd out here. It's, 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 it's home field for both sides. It's, it's packed tonight. And parking is difficult down here with a lot of the renovations. You have to get here early. So Aguilar looking downfield, finds Ellis, spins, breaks the tackle, and goes out of bounds at, I'm thinking it's the 32. They're going to say he's at the 33. So it was another first down. So Ellis 21 on the reception. Aguilar drops back. 
co pocket collapses as he's running. Scattered open field, breaks a tackle. Ball comes out, fumbles. Fumble works out in their favor. They pick up a couple extra yards there with the ball going uh, a couple yards forward. A little whoopsie doopsie. Yeah. Panthers trying to capitalize off of the turnover. Since the Tigers have scored 21 unanswered. Aguilar gets it to Ellis again. There is a flag on the play. You're signaling holding. Is it? Are you calling a hold? I think it might have been a hold. Devondre, he made the tackle there. But the Candy Creek... Uh, Lineman? It might have been a receiver. Because... We see a replay. Well, the umpire threw it from the backfield, so it's close to the line of scrimmage. They're conversing. You want to get the right call? I do. As we wait with anticipation. We signaling the Tigers and the Panthers, so most likely both plays penalties will offset, and they'll replay the down. Waiting for the line judge and the, the head referee. Because they were talking with the Panthers. Now they're talking with the Tigers. Personal foul, 21. Gets the defense. Holding. Gets number eight on the offense. Those penalties offset. We played it down. Signal. So second and three. Second and two for the Panthers. Just a minute 18. And remember, the Tigers are getting the ball back in the half. And they're keeping Ellis in the backfield. Ref still talking to the Panthers, one of the Panthers coaches. Probably having a conversation with Coach Hyman right now. Still, still waiting on what's going on with the head referee and umpire. A lot of this downtime is going to hurt the Panthers' momentum, mm -hmm. especially whenever they have been playing up tempo. So we're waiting for both sides. Yeah, you want to make sure you get things right. Panthers are closing in on the red zone. Looking. There's still, so probably, so they're pushing the ball back. No, and now they're moving the ball back. <laughs> so I guess what they're doing is we are, I don't know what they're doing, so I don't – because it looks like this is going to give the Panthers a first down. So I guess they're assessing both penalties with the yardage, and it's going to get favor in Caney Creek. So first and 10 of the 20 is a handed off to Ellison between the tackles. It looks like he gets four – Time out there by Caney Creek. So that's going to be their second timeout of the half. 
with just under a minute left remaining here in the first half. With a lot of the stoppage, we were playing ahead of the Woodlands Oak Ridge. I'm going to check and see what's going on just south of us over at the bank. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but just another reminder that it is homecoming. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the homecoming ceremony within 56 seconds, 56 game seconds. I have to, I have to clarify. Great clarification. I have to clarify. Feels like sometimes those last couple minutes of the half can feel like a good amount of time with the well, that's what it felt like watching the Lions and Chiefs last night. Yeah, Big win for the Lions. It's a great game. Huge fan of Amon Ross St. Brown. Aguilar does a keeper as it's a quarterback draw. Jump the middle. So it'll be third and two. The Panthers still have one timeout as there's less than 40 seconds here in the half. Ellis goes in motion. No, that's Graves in the backfield. Going forward, the corner of the end zone, and incomplete. That looked like it was Carson. Carson Gavarro? Just at the top corner of the end zone, near the pylon, had his eyes on it. So it's going to be fourth and two. I want to make sure that I had the right receiver. So it was Carson Gavaro? I believe so. Okay. I couldn't tell. So they hand it off to Graves as he just finds plenty of space. So he gets tackled at the goal line. And I just see them. You could look just right across the field. They're telling their offense to line it up, line it up, line it up. We have one timeout, 20 seconds remaining. Graves and Aguilar in the backfield. Gives it back off the Graves, ground and pound, smash mouth. They say that he crosses the plane. That is a touchdown. Panthers gets on the board with 14 seconds remaining. Two big runs. Yeah. Right there by Jaden Graves. And that's a great heads up by the, the Candy Creek offense. You have to go fast. You don't want to waste that last time out because it basically takes your chances of, of doing another run play and then coming up short, and that would basically take it into, into halftime. And allow the Tigers to make some adjustments, mm -hmm. if, especially whenever there's some stoppage. And this extra point just hits, hits the left post, and it is no good. But right here, Graves easily crosses the plane. I think that that is Graves' third touchdown of the season I want to double check my notes so the turnover by the Tigers ends up to be costly for them that is true that is very true Jackson with the interception able to and the Panthers able to capitalize and chew enough or use up enough time on the clock and while the Tigers are going to return here, see if they can try to find their way downfield, but they will be getting the ball back in 14 seconds. See if they can get a good return here. If not, more than likely, they'll just take it into halftime, knowing they get ball to begin the, the second half. You're up 21-9. But we'll see what happens here on the kickoff double checking having a little internet issues up here I was trying to double check to make sure that that was grave second or third rushing touchdown because I know he had one in week one I'm trying to remember if he had one last week I think he did so that'll be his third rushing touchdown correct he had okay. two Going into week three, there was his first of the night. Because Ellis, I believe, had all the running backs last week, and even Aguilar all had a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So a little squib kick. Mm -hmm. 
So eight seconds remaining in the half. So Braylon Reese did return the ball for the Tigers. We're seeing referees conversing again. I think it's just going to be another handoff to either Green or Medina and just call it the half. Take it into half. You didn't get the, in my opinion, the good enough field position in order to try to take a shot to try to put, possibly get in the field goal range or possibly even score that touchdown. You were seeing just the Panthers still run into it because they were – looked like the Tigers were expecting that, okay, they're just going to – like a punt, they're just going to – once the ball stops, they're just going to call it. No, you – it's a live ball. Mm -hmm. Whoever picks it up has sole possession. The Tigers' offense are going to start at their own 30. You never know. They might actually just go empty and try to just chuck it downfield. I think you're right. So five, five wide receivers for the Tigers. So it's a handoff to Green as he's trying to stretch the field. And as he cuts back, breaks a tackle, but that does it for the half. So after, after 24 minutes, Connor Tigers lead the Candy Creek Panthers 21 to nine. Some big, big plays on both sides of the ball by both teams. We know we had the Grace touchdown and we had the green rushing touchdown. We had the field goal from the Panthers. Their actual their first field goal actually attempt of the season. And then Nunley had himself a rushing touchdown. Yeah, all the touchdowns tonight on the ground. So we we talked about it. Really ground and pound in the trenches type of a game, and that's what we've seen so far. Candy Creek is winning the turnover battle with that not only interception so and also just with the way that the Panthers have played they have been putting pressure on Nunley so we're going to see what coach does at halftime see what adjustments they're going to make and just for all of you who are watching we're going to go ahead and mute ourselves so you can actually enjoy the halftime extravaganza and the Candy Creek Drill team and band are going to play, and then we're going to have the homecoming court for Conroe. And following the game, we will have Conroe's band and drill team take the field. So enjoy the show. Have yourself a grand old time. We'll be back following halftime. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the Caney Creek High School Starlets. The Starlets strive to maintain their high standards both on and off the field following their motto of solidarity, self-discipline, and service. They are leaders in the community as well as in the classroom. The Starlets take pride in their tradition of excellence. Please congratulate the following Starlets. Spirit Girl of the Week, Kayla Ramirez. Starlet of the Week, Ashley Garcia. Officer of the Week, Bianca Castro. And Director Pick of the Week, Betsa Bell Torres. This year's social board officers are Spirit Leader Lizette Zayala, Secretary Melissa Quitana, Vice President Nira Gayona, and President Aubrey Toddy. This year's dance officers are Lieutenants Maritza Balderas and Bianca Castro, 
Lieutenant Colonels Gracie Menchaca and Kirsten Smithy, and Cur Colonel Kaylee Gates. The Starlets pick for Teacher of the Week is Mr. Stephen Murphy. This week, the Starlets will be doing a military routine to We're Not Gonna Take It. The 2023-2024 Caney Creek Starlets are under the direction of Ms. Heidi Close and Ms. Daniela Archia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field your 2023 Caney Creek High School Mighty Panther Band and Color Guard. The Mighty Panther Band is led onto the field tonight by drum majors Paula Maldonado, Alexander Lopez, and Michelle Santoyo. Freshman Band Member of the Week is Josiah Scadinas. Band Member of the Week is Carlos Alijo. Color Guard Members of the Week are Cheyenne Einstein and Mariana Villanueva. The Mighty Panther Band will be performing part one and two of their 2023 contest show entitled The Big Apple.
Special thanks to Jill Tanner, Heidi Swatzel, and the Caney Creek High School Theater Department. Another thanks to our sponsors, Old Houston Road Storage, C&M Porsche Shoe Sales, Top Notch Used Cars, Grangerland Pizza Hut, and PEM Tooling. Directors of the Mighty Panther Band and Color Guard are Jeremy Rabine, Stephen Clazel, Charlie Herrera, Tim LeBlanc, Damian Canella, Jose Sandoval, and Megan Pratt. The principal of Kenny Creek High School is Dr. Terry Benson, and the superintendent of Connor ISD is Dr. Curtis Knoll.
Tigers have just came back out on the field through their inflatable. Just wanted to say congratulations to our homecoming king, Brian Molina, and our homecoming queen, Mackenzie Johnson. Congratulations to the two seniors and making Conroe proud for your 2023 homecoming king and queen. Sam. Yes. How was your halftime? It was great. I got to walk around, stretch, got loose. I'm locked in for the second half of what should be uh, another good half of football. So we were going, we were crunching some numbers up here. We were told that there would be no math because, you know, it's the weekend. It's, it's the weekend, yeah. It's the weekend. But from what we have gathered, Conroe has only thrown, has attempted to pass the ball seven times tonight and have used the ground and pound about 15 carries. Mm -hmm. They've, When they've gotten the ball, they've either, you know, three and out or have gotten the ball in good field position, and that's what's – Yep, especially off of that punt block. That punt block. And so that's basically what's – allowed them to, to play so well is either not a lot of possession, yeah, not, not a lot, a lot of time lot. operating with the ball but Nunley has only had two completions so far this evening that's correct and you're saying it was for 27 yards? Uh, r roughly 27 yards yeah and just he had that that one play one big play in the uh, first quarter on their first touchdown drive which set up Jermico to get the touchdown. That's when he had his mm -hmm. one big pass. And his other completion was only for a yard. So looking to get the... Because they've, they've been utilizing Medina. They've been utilizing Green in the backfield. And they even had that big kind of that sweep that um, Mayon, Mayon had earlier. And this Caney Creek defense has been putting a lot of pressure yep. and making Nunley having to either keep it or just not being able to really get set and has drawn him to, you know, throw a couple of incompletions. And he had that big – he was sacked for a huge loss mm -hmm. earlier in the second half or he second was. quarter. And what we've seen a lot from this Panther offense, we talked about it in the pregame, ground and pound, continuing to just keep the ball on the ground, not really utilizing the pass. And you said that they have rushed 25 times tonight. 25 times. And been using using the trio. And it was from Graves, Ramsher, and Graves, Rancher, Ellison. They they sprinkled a little bit of Palmer in there, but I know that they've been throwing to Palmer more than actually utilizing him in the backfield. And Aguilar had kept a couple. But it's just a lot of that power back run style that you see from Graves. And just being able to chew up a lot of clock, especially whenever the Panthers have held the ball. But this is the second half of football. Conroe still leading 21-9. And we'll see what's going to come from the kickoff. So it's number 32, Eric Benitez, who is favoring the tee, the lefty. He likes to get it to, likes to favor to his left. It's a little bit of a squib style kick. And it's a return from the five. Nice, excellent run by Mayen as he's continuing. Not touched, tackled, and he finally gets brought down in Panther territory at the 47. 48 47, waiting for the final spot. And I mentioned earlier, he's a, a dangerous return man. Uh, first in the district uh, for, for punt yards on a return. So he was able to just brush off of that first attempt. So that was right there, that first contact. And then they're trying to get a shoestring tackle from him, but was able to just continue to turn the legs and fight through it and gets tackled right there at the 48, which is right here at midfield for the Tigers. And since they've been sticking with a little bit of this run game and with this lead, just try to continue to chew up some clock or let Nunley get some passes. So it's going to be a sweep handoff over there to Green. Try to build up Nunley's confidence a little bit. Let him try to get comfortable in the pocket. Try to pass a little bit more. So Green gets four in the rush, which will be a second and six. Anything you're looking forward to this half? I want to see how the uh, Connor offense, how they are going to adjust with Nunley's uh, passing performance in the first half, or are they just going to keep on going with the ground game? 
It's another handoff to Green right up the middle, and he gets the first down. So it's seven on the rush. So the junior having himself a pretty good night so far. Yes, he is. Because he has two touchdowns tonight, correct? Yes, two touchdowns. Both pretty big runs. One an eight-yard touchdown, the other a 12-yard touchdown. So Nunley, play action, three-step drop, moves up, steps, and it's just a drop pass. And that was for Tyler Weiss. Nice ball thrown over there in Weiss's way. Just He kind of slipped right there, mm -hmm. running his route. If he came down with it, it would have been a nice big first down for the Tigers. So with this spread, they're doing the hand signals. You can see from the Tigers' sideline as Nunley gets the call, letting his team and the personnel know. So it's going to be a handoff as Green is sweeping right. He gets extra, and he's still standing, and he finds his way into the end zone. Oh, I think I think the ref has marked him out of bounds. So he get – you are right. Yep. Ruined a call like that. I was I a little know. excited. I was just right out of the gate. First possession or first drive. But we really got to see Jermico hit it into that second gear there. Uh, once he got to the outside, just really picked up speed, was just a able to run out that, that Candy Creek defense, but stepped out of bounds. Another thing that I would like to see, what I've been noticing just watching so shortly this season, is just his how he does change and reset and goes in that second gear, but just picking up and just mm -hmm. picking back up. So it's another pitch, and that is a sweep. Looks like it's Nigel Lede in for the score. The gold standard strikes again for Conroe. And he continues the touchdown streak in his first three games of the year. This one, I think they'll count that as a, as a rushing touchdown for Nigel. By air or by ground, he delivers to the end zone. So the Tigers lining up for the point after. Right down Main Street. So with the reverse, the Tigers strike and are leading now 28-9. So Lede is having himself a day. Yes, he is. See, that was a 15-yard reverse. And again, they been the theme of the Conroe Knight is taking, taking advantage of good field position. Has been... They're really their key to success because. And also throwing off the defense with a lot of the motion that they've been using. With the play action, with the RPO little options, the pitches, because they had the little pitch mm -hmm. to Mayon earlier, Mayon earlier, and you see some counters, some draws. It's just a nice, well-balanced run game that they've been able to produce. Yeah, the longest, the longest touchdown drive for the, the Tigers has been has only been 55 yards. It's going to be a touchback for the Panthers. They're going to set up shop for their first drive of this half at the 25. Want to see what couple adjustments they have made for this for the Panthers? 
want we'll to see what the Tigers are going to try to execute. They're still showing those four down linemen. It looks like they're creeping a defensive back. Looks like he's going to try to come in with a blitz. So they're pretty much pressing the gaps and found Graves in the backfield, so it'll be a loss of one. And I feel like this, this Caney Creek offense needs to, to, to really get something going here. You know, Conroe comes out and start the half, gets the touchdown, makes that opening half statement. And not only, they should try to still carry off of that momentum that they had in at the end of the, as they get tackled back in the backfield. But they had that good momentum, especially following the turnover and just Starting, which we thought it was going to be just right there in the red zone for him. Pushed them back close to midfield, but able to just chew up more clock, make their way downfield, and finally punch it in for their first touchdown this evening. But it looks like the adjustments that the Tigers have made, they know that they're trying to just mm -hmm. continue to press right in between the tackles, especially right near the center and the guards. And what this Conroe defense is basically saying is, if you're going to beat me, you're going to beat me through the air. And that's plenty of open space right there for Aguilar as he just stops mid in his run and is tackled. So it'll be a fourth and looks like it's a fourth and six. So Aguilar gets close to nine yards on the keeper. He knew that he was coming into those three Tigers and just decided to try to power his way through. So this will be the first punt this eve or the first punt this half yep. for the Panthers. So it'll be a three and out. Ooh, bad snap. Able to still get it off. And still get pretty wow. good kick. Way to stay composed there. Bobbled the ball a little bit, but turn around. Booted it across midfield right around, I believe. They're going to mark it at the 36. You were right. This is going to be the second drive of this half for the Tigers. Off of the Lede run. Tigers go man in motion. So it was a kind of a bubble screen, quick pass over to the flats. And that was Mayen. They're going to say it was an incomplete pass. Just an update on what's going south of us over at the bank. Woodlands are up 35 to 20 over Oak Ridge, and it is just with 10 15 remaining in. The third quarter as a lot of pressure on on Nunley and just more and more. And I'm seeing that they're bringing four for the Panthers, mm -hmm. but it was looked like it was a bit of a play fake. It was like a read option. That was almost dangerous because Nunley looked like he almost dropped the ball there trying to, to take it away from Medina on the read option. So he's looking for his man. That's a... That is a reception. That was number 15, Zachary Allen. And I think he did get the first down. So that is a first down. Good job for Allen, keeping an eye on where the first down marker was. He knew that towards the end of that play, when he was coming down with you, he was close to the sideline, being able to just get possession, make sure that he gets out of bounds, but is actually passed for the first down as he moves the sticks for the Tigers. Another pass to Allen as he gets 
Another big first down. Had a post, but there is a flag on the play. I see the flag down over at the 50. There's good vision there. Good vision on Nunley? No, I'm, I'm seeing the flag. Oh. It's that yellow. You can spot it a mile away. Just reminds me I need to do my laundry when I get home. Yeah. I can wait another day. It always can. So that's going to be a hold from the Tigers. It's going to nullify the big first down. So push them back 10 as they are now pinned back a little bit more in their own territory. Seeing they're lining up with four wide receivers right now. And Medina's in the backfield giving Green a little breather. Nunley looking in the middle of the field as he's intercepted again. And who was it's, – it's Jackson, number five. Traverius, Traverius Jackson gets his second interception tonight. And, again, it's, it's, it's Caney Creek sitting in that zone and – Maybe it, it threw off Nunley a little bit, but but we've seen that both both of the interceptions. It's like Jackson's playing a little bit mm -hmm. of a spy, kind of like if you would if you remember like the old Tampa two style. You'd all because he's a linebacker, he's just playing back in there, just spying around, and comes down with his second interception of the game. And First and 10 for the Panthers. It's a play action. It's going to be an option. Aguilar's going to keep it as he breaks two Tiger tackles, but it only gets two on the rush. So it's second and eight. Second and eight, their Panthers are getting the call from the sideline. They're lining up with two backs. And I see Graves and I see Ellis in a unique style that they're lining up two backs. It's not split backs. It's, it's not, like no. to the side of Aguilar. Very interesting formation. They ran it back-to-back -back plays there play before that I read the it was kind of a triple option quarterback kept it and then ran to the outside so third and seven for the Panthers close to midfield trying to get back into Tiger territory just under five and a half left here in the third two-step drop Aguilar Big sack by the Tigers. That is number 10, Matthew Westmoreland. Yeah, and that's going to add on to the sack count for the year. Heading into this week, he was tied for third in the district with, with two sacks. They'll add on, give him three. Passing his, his teammate, Jaden Ramos, who has two and a half heading into this week. Yeah, we haven't seen much of Ramos. We haven't. He's been, he was really dominant through the first two weeks, causing havoc. So Panthers punting. Pretty good hang time. Man signaling for the fair catch, but it comes out of his hands. Has to get on the ball or else it, or else the Panthers could have come up with mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but we haven't seen Ramos a lot because he is one of those defensive tackles that does put a lot of pressure in the pass play. And the Panthers haven't been utilizing the pass as much. They've been throwing a little bit. And when it is a pass, it's it's usually these these quick, just to the flat, getting out quick to these running backs, let them go make a play. It's usually just he gets 
Aguilar gets a snap, maybe one, two steps, gets set, throws. Usually following his first read, which is usually dumping it off in the flat to either whichever running back that they have playing. And it's a handoff over to Green as he's making his way cross field. It looks like he's getting to the second level. Breaking tackles. Pushed out of bounds, gets the first down. It looks like it was a 12-yard rush. So the Tigers were going split backs. Plenty of space for Green. Fights his way through those tackles. So we get 16 on that rush for another first down for the Tigers. Green, nice spin move. Continues, he's fighting for extra yardage. Gets tackled at the 33. So it's 22 for that rush. Going to continue to add on to his yards per carry. And I believe he leads the district in, in, in yards per carry, sitting well, right around 7.7. .7. Mm. Nunley, plenty of time. Rolling left. He looks like he's going to keep it, so he gets back to the line of scrimmage, gets a first down that looks that it was going to be 12, depending on where the line judge says that he ran out of bounds. It's been all Tigers this half. We're able to get one touchdown on the Lede reverse. Man in motion. Hand off over to Medina. Get to see him this time, this drive. Just short of the first down marker. It's just too shy. Nunley keeps it again. Gets a nice little spin move Ooh. and is just crawling. Yeah. So he gets the first down. I do like that matte black on those helmets. I do too. With that gold tiger decal. Yeah. First five plays of the drive all been rushing plays. The Tigers are in the red zone. It's going to be a first and goal. Another bit of a trap. Kind of a routine rush. Hand it off to Green again. Say he's down at the four. So it's second and goal. Might be another hand off to Green. Could be a potential quarterback keeper. Yeah. With the backfield of Nelly and Dramico, there's a lot of possibilities, especially when you're here in the red zone. Lede goes in motion. Nunley keeps it as he runs in for the score for his second rushing touchdown of the evening. Tigers on the board yet again. Leading 34-9, pending the extra point. And again, not trying to jinx it. Field goal unit has been perfect for PATs this season. Low snap. Still gets it off, and perfection is still intact for the Tigers for the point after. It's 35-9. All Conroe. Here at Moorhead Stadium. Yeah, following that, that Nunley interception, the drive before, Connor really not taking any chances in the passing game. Just strictly run that drive. And just picking up big chunks of runs, 14, 22, 11, 8, 5, 5, and then that, that four-yard rushing touchdown from Nunley. So this Connor run game, give credit to the, the O-line. 
just really just this run game has been great all night and it's been perfectly orchestrated by the uh, the whole all offense as a whole. And that offensive line is made up by three seniors and two juniors. So at least we know that they have the experience, mm -hmm. especially it's favoring the left side for Nunley. So you have your center, which is Williams, William Spicer. Then your left guard, Adam Perez, and your left tackle, Tyler Tates. They've all, they're all seniors. So you know that this unit has been together for a very long time, especially as you were referring to. Maybe we were just talking off mic, but just how they tend to indoctrinate mm -hmm. these players starting from the middle school level leading up to high school and keeping them intact. And so they know each other's, mm -hmm. they know each other's routine. And then you have Quavion Swampsey, and then you have Elijah Williams that are both juniors that will be here next year for the Tigers. Yep. Oh, ball's out. Ball's out. And it looks like Conroe came up with it. They're, we're going to wait for the referee to signal who has possession. They're saying that he was down, so that was Timothy Palmer on the return. Unfortunately, they're... Fortunately, I don't think that there's any reviews here in high school football. No. Maybe one day. They might have the high-tech technology, but you never know. But starting at their own 15, Aguilar does a keeper as he sweeps right. Say you get seven on this one. So it'll be a second and three with just... A minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. So Brandon Ramsher is in the backfield. As he hands it off. Ramsher punches it for the first down for the Panthers. And that's one thing that these Panthers do. While they consistently have been running the ball, they chew up a lot of clock. Mm -hmm. And that has been their huge success for their first two wins this season. Just controlling the clock. Having close to six-minute possessions. has been in their favor. So another run by Ramshire as he gets stuck behind one of his men in the backfield and is tackled. And that was Jane Ramos. So it's a timeout. Looks like it's a. Actually, no. No, they're just gonna. The time's about to expire, so we're gonna switch sides, and it's gonna be a big fourth quarter coming up. That so after three quarters of football, the Conroe Tigers are leading the Candy Creek Panthers 35 to nine on this homecoming extravaganza. It's a fun word. Extravaganza? Yeah, it's a little pretty fun to say. Extravaganza. So is the dance tomorrow? It is. Do you have a date? I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Did you do your home homecoming proposal, whatever it's called? Yes, I did. What'd you do? It was uh it was Barbie themed. And it said like, Can I take you to homecoming? Like, can Oh, uh, it was I pretty get it, it was pretty it, smart. And they're they're holding the dance. The, u the last two years, they've held it on the, uh, the football field here, but they're actually holding on the new auxiliary field. Just uh, Wait, y'all's dance is going to be outside? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's no there's where to hold it inside that would fit everybody. 
That's true. I hope hopefully you have a, a linen suit. Breathes a whole lot better. As Aguilar throws to the flat and he gets to Ramshire. So it will be third. Third and four. Aguilar hands it off as Ramsher is met at the line of scrimmage. Big fourth down there for the Tigers. The punt team is making their way back to the field. Did you watch Barbie? I have. And was it good? Some good, some good songs in there. Ryan Gosling. I didn't get a chance to see it yet. Uh, I, ha I have a newborn at home. I haven't been able to make it out yeah. that often. It was, it was a short movie. Well, that's good. So it gives me a. I'm not a big movie watcher. How dare you? Because I'm not. It's hard for me to, to to sit still for that long, and not like talk. <laughs> so. Like I, I'm, I'm cool with with sitting here and then because I get to talk or you know whatever's on my mind. I, I get it. It's it's in a dark setting and yeah. it's movie theater protocol. You're not supposed to talk. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not supposed to. People you're not supposed to be on your phone. You're not supposed to be talking. They used to have these little promos or little PSAs before the movie would start. If you ever went to the Cinemark, they would have a front row Joe telling you what's going on. I miss those. I miss that the theaters don't do that anymore. You think that people would remember that you don't need to be on your phone or need to be talking and just enjoy the movie. Enjoy the event of going to the theater. As Nunley gets a pass over looks like that was Keegan O'Dell. Yep. First time seeing Keegan O'Dell with the reception tonight. Did you try to do the Barbenheimer, watching Barbie and Oppenheimer? Not on the same day. Okay, but you did see Oppenheimer too? I have. See, for someone who says that you don't like to sit, that's almost a three-hour movie. Was, it, it was a very long movie. Mayan gets the handoff on the sweep as he is met by a pride of Panthers. Pack of Panthers, pride of Panthers. So it'll be second and long. Like the last movie I saw was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I did not see that movie. Are you at least an indie fan? Did you see Raiders of the Lost Ark? Probably a long time ago. I played I played the video games. They the, didn't the, have the, any Lego, no. the Lego. Okay, the, the yes, Lego. Okay, the Lego one. Yes, yes. Nunley throws off balance intended for Keelan Harris incomplete. Third and nine. I don't know when we're going to be back in the booth together, but I'm giving uh -huh. you homework. You oh. have to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. It is on Disney Plus. And you're you're gonna quiz me. I'll be. I don't need to. I don't need to okay. quiz you. I don't I'll need to quiz you. You'll just know. I will know. Okay. Perfect. I will look at you, and then you're gonna be like, you're gonna either give me the head nod, or you're gonna just look down in humiliation as there's a flag on the play. Yeah, I believe that was a, a free play there. There was some some jumpiness from the. Uh, I think we're going to have ourselves an official timeout. Just nine, close to ten minutes remaining here mm -hmm. in regulation. You checking to see what's going on just south of us over the bank? Last time we checked, the Woodlands were up 35-20 on Oak Ridge. Do we know what – actually, we haven't looked into uh, what's going on with a couple of other teams within the district. That's true. Let me see what I can find out for you okay. real quick. Because I believe the. Because uh I know that New Caney. Wait, that was. Ooh, I was thinking of last week's matchup. Yeah, Willis is playing at New Caney right now. Oh, so that's not that far from my house. But as I l look at the final, the game is final. The Willis Wildcats beat the New Caney Eagles 54 21. So it looks like the Willis Wildcats might be the team to beat in district this year. Yeah, just just putting up a a lot of a lot of points uh, through the first two weeks, ninety seven points, and well, then you have the fifty four point performance tonight. 
So that puts them. Uh, and right it is it is nice also having yeah that quarterback of theirs. Yeah. What's his name again? DJ DJ, DJ, DJ Lagway. DJ yeah. Lagway, the Florida Florida, Florida commit. Florida. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it helps having a five star mm. recruit. The Woodlands as your game, captain. It Woodlands. shows forty one twenty as of right now. I'm on the, okay. the live stream. It says here they're in the third quarter. I don't know if that's uh, true or not. So well, it has to be if it's connected with our CISD Wood Forest Bank Stadium stream. Yes. High scoring game over at the bank. Kaching, Kaching. So it's going to be a third and four for the Tigers in Panther territory. Medina in the backfield. Mann goes in motion. Nunley's going to keep it as he sweeps left. Is fighting for extra yardage, but finally gets tackled close to the 36. a lot of the crowd tonight it's good it's good that we have a nice full stadium especially here for homecoming so Nunley with the three-step drop pocket collapses but still throwing was that over to Odell again I think that was Zachary Allen and see we, we talked about this earlier they, they switched numbers. That's right. That's right. And so it was a little confusing because I was looking at the, the sheet that they, they give us, and I'm like, this is – so the, I, they flip-flop numbers. And That's so, right. I need to look at – I was looking at my defensive yeah. numbers. I needed to go back to my offense. I need to make a quick note right here. So Jermico Green gets the handoff as he is tackled. Does the ball come out? But he still has possession of it. Third and three for the Tigers. Trying to capitalize on another score. Dunley. It's going to be tackled as he's running out of the tackle box, out of bounds. Did he say he get back to the line scrimmage? It's going to be this would be considered a, since he was a design run. It's not going to be a sack since he was running away with it. But good pressure again by the Panthers. So we have ourselves timeout. another timeout. It's Conroe. It's their first time out of the half. So that's Conroe's first time out this half. Still sticking with the ground game, but incorporating a little bit more passes, especially this drive. But it's just this front four of the Panthers that are just keeping Nunley having a little bit of happy feet mm -hmm. where he's not able to get set because it's either he's moving up in the pocket because those ends are just trying to sweep around around the edge or it's just kind of broken and he's having to just go ahead and scramble and just do a keeper. Mm -hmm. The Panther defense doing a good job of making him uncomfortable. I mean, they, they have made him throw those two interceptions most all year. And you know he's going to be looking at a lot of yeah. that in the film room come Monday morning. It's a new offense to him. We talked about it earlier. I talked to Coach Hardman yesterday. You know, transfer from Grand Oaks. 
but Coach Harvin's been impressed by how fast he's acclimated to the new offense. And that's Odell, number six, this game. Yep. Keeping me honest, I saw you pointing at me. So the Tigers get themselves another first down. Yeah, going back to... It to looked like he was also looking for Dramico, but it was just right, just mm -hmm. a nice drag right there from Odell. Well underneath. And able to just get the reception and get mm -hmm. the first down. So another handoff to Dramico, just dancing his way through the line. Gets five on that rush. So we have ourselves another official timeout. So how long is homecoming going to be this? Like, what time does the dance start for you guys? Uh, Oh, I believe it's it's 8, 8 to 11. 8 to 11? I believe so, yes. Do you have to have, is it catered? No food, no drinks. Uh, you can buy. Uh, last year they you could buy. There, well, let's see. I'm trying to remember. A year is a long time ago. Uh, I think there was maybe some food trucks, but I know you could buy definitely buy some water. Maybe they might be be given some water this yeah, year. Yeah, especially with how warm it is. Let's see. Let's see how. Uh, when was homecoming last year? Oh, it was pretty early. I think it was. It might. It was either week three or week four. I think it might have been week four. We played Willis. Willis was our homecoming game. Okay. We won. DJ, DJ Lagway did not play. Helped in our favor. It was a really good game, though. Came down to the last play. Because I think Willis barely – I don't think Willis made the playoffs last year because of Lagway's having a couple – he had a couple injuries. I mean, it's not too terrible. I, it, would, it, it won't show me. Here we go. No, that's Sunday. You could just – Guesstimate. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it says around 80 around that time. Low of 77 tomorrow. But it's probably be around 80. We did, get, we did get a little rain. I was a little surprised whenever I was driving south to the stadium. Where I was coming north because I live south of here. But I was a little surprised with some clear things just falling on my windshield. It's like, oh, that's, that's uh. rain. Hey, I missed you. Where you been? And my, eventually, lawn, my lawn misses you. <laughs> eventually, once we get to winter, we'll feel like, well, what's the, what's like having the sun out? Medina goes in motion. Nunley. Throwing through the middle of the field. It's a touchdown pass. I believe that's Tyler Wise. Number nine, Tyler Wise with the reception. Nunley with his first touchdown pass this evening. Which it's now 41-9 favoring the Tigers pending this extra point. getting set still perfect stays perfect yeah you're right that was Tyler Weiss on the reception just right there he was a slot receiver. Finds just open space, just following that seam and just looked and just got it right into the breadbasket. Yep. I believe that's why the second touchdown on the season. Caught one in the uh, season opener and then another one just now. A long drive by the Tigers. Longest one this evening. I believe so. It was about four minutes. 
I think it was the longest in, in distance and time for the Tigers. They got the ball round, what, 10.50? 10.49, right on, right on the money. I have a little cheat sheet right here. For those of you watching and listening at home, we do take a lot of notes, but sometimes I was told that there would be no math. That's my joke, and I'm sticking with it. There's only math if it's a Thursday night game. For you, not for me. That's true. So it does not go in the end zone. It's a nice return here from Caney Creek. So it's Timothy Palmer starting at the two. And was tackled at the 47. Gets 45 on that return. Very nice. It's a very nice return. So with six and a half remaining here in regulation, Panthers trying to get back into the red zone and put some more points on the board. Grays with a handoff, big, big hole. Had a little juke to the right. I think if he didn't change his footing, he probably could have had another four on that. I agree. It's a little bit of a counter there, up the middle. Alignment just. But he has better vision than we do because we're up here in this press box. Another handoff to Graves. Following his blockers, but is met back at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and four for the Panthers. Actually, yep. the Panthers brought in a different quarterback. That was number 13, Alex Stewart. So Aguilar's night might be done. I didn't even notice the... I didn't notice until the play. The play before. I had to double check. Stewart threw an incomplete, and now it's the punt team back out for the Panthers. Mayen back to return. And again, great hang time from Vega, allowing his team to make it downfield. So the Tigers are going to start at the 10 this drive. See if they can make it down the field 90 yards. With 520 remaining, probably going to just stick with this ground game, mm -hmm. chew up some clock, go home with the dub. On homecoming. On homecoming. Something to be proud of. And just a reminder for those who are still watching with us tonight. The Golden Girls and the Conroe Tiger Band will be playing after the game concludes. We will still keep the broadcast live for you. And also just a reminder, since we have been time talking out. about homecoming week. Conroe, it's their second time out of the half. Just another thing that's going to be taking place tomorrow for the Alumni Association. If you are a member of the Alumni Association or, or just Conroe High Alumni in general, just want to let you all know that it is the Alumni Association Homecoming Breakfast taking place at the CHS Old Gymnasium, The Pit. It's at 9 a.m. Just if you're trying to get here, get here early so you can park up front near the gymnasium. $10 a person. We are honoring the 
1983 graduating class, and we are also going to be honoring Buddy Moorhead, who passed away in 1983, and the Moorhead family will be there as well. So the namesake of our home stadium, Buddy Moorhead, his family, being there, and it's a handoff to number 24. I believe that's Tatum Bell. So it looks like yeah. Green's night is going to be over. Letting a lot of the more people in the depth chart get some reps right now. Yeah, that's 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 Tatum Bell, uh, senior, one of my good friends. That was a big first down run for him. Yes, it was. I'm glad he gets to see the see the field tonight. See the field, yeah. Special on homecoming with the pageantry. Bell again. Ring the bell. I like that. And I believe they put in the, I think Christian Nunley's night is over, but the other Nunley's night isn't over. His brother is in. Yes. The freshman. Number 12, Cameron Nunley. Good call, good eye. Thank you. School's in session. Nunley. Oh, he's a southpaw. Dishes it over to Braylon Reese. He's got a career 100% 100, 100 completion percentage. Well, that's only one pass. It's 100%. He's one for one. I learned that statistics class. I do have to applaud you uh, bringing in your statistics tonight. Thank you. So you would do a little spreadsheet over there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that for the next week. Get a lot of these analytical numbers. Nunley dishes it to Bell. Plenty of open space as he gets another first down and extra for another Tiger first down. First and 10 at the Tiger 40. Just under three minutes. Nunley hands it back off to Bell. Breaks the tackle. Actually, that is That's number 20. That is Cameron Menifee. We're in the depth of running back for these Tigers. And these Tigers are able to just continue to find themselves 10. Mm -hmm. At least 10 yards each carry this this drive. So Nunley gets the play. Minifee's still in the backfield, giving Bell a breather. Nunley is rolling left, throwing downfield, incomplete. Saw two Panthers jump up at it. That was 24 and 25. So that was Justin Smith and Dylan Smart. Actually, 22. Josue Gonzalez and Dylan Smart. Looking to pick him off. Could have happened. Yep. Just under two minutes left here in regulation. Bell back in the backfield. Mm -hmm. 
Dunley, the freshman. Hands it off to Bell. A lot of space as he's trying to stretch it. Spin move. Still turning his legs, turning his legs. Nice run right there by the senior. Mm -hmm. So it'll be fourth and long. I like that Bell has no quit. No, he doesn't. I know Tatum very well. He was uh, on junior varsity last year. Played really well there. Senior. Taking advantage back. of the reps. Oh, yeah. So the Tigers are just going to continue to let the clock wind down as they call a timeout for their last timeout with 45 seconds left here in the game. Timeout. They're going to bring out the punt team. Their last timeout of the game. Seeing back to punt. I think Ellis is back to return. Nice punt by the Tigers as it gets inside the 10. By the spot, it looks like they're put, placing the ball at the 9. So with 35 seconds remaining, the Panthers bring their offense out, which will be the last drive of the game, which looks to be the last drive of the game. Unnecessary roughness. Number 15. There is a penalty. At number 31. Looks like the penalties are going to offset. offset. It was after the play. First down, Conroy. Both of them personal foul. I think uh, they left a flag at oh, the yeah. 50. It's about to bring that up. I think the coach is letting them know. See Coach Hyman on the field. Well, tidbit, I actually beat him in a cornhole tournament. I wanted to bring that up. I was here actually on the, we can see the baseball field, and it was about 30, felt like 20. Couldn't feel my hands, wind. So it was a little uh, probably unfair. Maybe if they have another Connor cornhole tournament. So it was actually a cornhole tournament for the school? It was. It was for the, the baseball team. Okay. And they held it on the baseball field. So it was a handoff. <laughs> Looks like they're going to just line back up. Just the clock's winding down. Close to 10 seconds left. And as time is going to expire, the, Con the Conroe Tigers stay undefeated, getting their first district win this season on homecoming, 42 to nine over the Caney Creek Panthers. Teams are going midfield. They are doing, they're shaking each other's hands. Next week, Going to be the battle of the, the undefeateds. Connor heads down to Willis next week to take on the Wildcats. So that should be an interesting game. Both teams 3-0. and You going to go to the game? Not sure. That'll be a good one. It'll be a great one. It will. So we'll get to see, I believe, heading into this game, Lagway and uh, Christian Nunley in all-purpose yards, first and second in the, in the district, yeah. Now, I know that the Woodlands had 
a rough, mm -hmm. just non-district matchups. They played some very competitive teams, which they went 0-2. But just you see how they came back, and I know that they've won. They're, they were winning the last mm -hmm. time we checked. I, I'm sure that they are still leading up on Oak Ridge. I don't want to report any false information. My left-hand man right here is Sam is checking for me. You are correct. Okay. Woodlands 48, Oak Ridge 20, 10 because minutes left. Number, I believe he's 7 or 11, Mabry Matoyer. He's actually not in the game right now. I think he's 7. Yes, okay. he is 7. So Mabry, he actually is committed to uh, University of Wisconsin. Yes. He's going to be a Badger. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and you, know, you know a great, great future Hall of Famer went to that school as well? J.J. Watt. There you go. You know he was in town this week for a flag football event, him and his wife, through Frito-Lay? Learned about that on the Dan Patrick Show. If I knew, I would have gone out there, but he was doing stuff with the Texans. I'm sure he's here for D'Amico's first yeah. head coaching game, first official head coaching game. Mm -hmm. But it's good that J.J. still gives to the city of Houston and the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. But just a reminder for everyone here that – we're still showing the highlights of the game, both Keeney Creek and Conroe. We are still going to have the Golden Girls and the legendary Conroe Tiger Band come out and do their halftime show. And we're going to stay off the broadcast for you. We're still going to be able to bring that to you, so just still stick with us. Hope everybody gets home safe. Tonight, have Sam. Have yourself a great homecoming. Thank you. My last one. Your last one. Yep. So is this your girlfriend who's your date? Yep. Okay. Man of many words right now. I know I am. Talking about talk about your girl and you just get mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Good to know. Don't want to let the audience know too much. I understand. Yeah, Got to be inconspicuous. <laughs> but for the CISD... Moorhead Stadium stream. I'm Jackson Cochran. I'm Sam Ulrich. Just want to say thank you for tuning in. Please stick with us, and we will have more broadcasting for the band and the drill team. HNC143, you all have a great night. Be safe. Enjoy homecoming, Sam. Thank you. Big night. Big, big win tonight for the Tigers. And thank you, Candy Creek. You all played one heck of a game. <laughs>